The Jamaica Constabulary Force is reporting that several intelligence-led operations were carried out in the first week of the new year, leading to the seizure of 18 firearms, including three rifles. Almost half of the 18 were seized in Police Area 3, with St. Elizabeth and Clarendon together accounting for eight illegal weapons now off the streets, a release from the Police High Command has stated. The corporate area divisions of St. Andrew North and St. Andrew Central account for another six of the seizures, while the streets of St. James are now safer following the seizure of four guns. Ten persons have been taken into custody in connection with these seizures. The police continue to urge persons with information that can lead to the seizure of illegal guns and the arrest of gunmen and gangsters to call Crime Stop at 311, the National Intelligence Bureau tip line at 811, the Police 119 number, or the nearest police station. The police reported that a 17-year-old is one of two persons charged with conspiracy to kidnap unauthorized possession of ammunition and using a prohibited weapon to commit a felony. The teen was charged alongside 33-year-old Andrew Williams, also known as Biggs, a Higgler of Taws Meadows, Spanish Town, St. Catherine. Reports from the Lucy police state that around 7.30 a.m., the complainant was taken from his workplace at gunpoint and transported to a location in Spanish Town where Williams reportedly demanded $100,000 for the man's safe return. A report was made and Williams was arrested by a team of officers. Both men were arrested and charged after a question and answer session in the presence of their attorney while their court dates are yet to be finalized. Investigators from the Linstead Police Station are reportedly still trying to ascertain the identity of the dead man who allegedly attempted to rob the injured persons. The incident occurred about 10.40 p.m. while the victims were at the rear of their home along Old Road in the community tending to chickens. They were allegedly pounced upon by the man who pointed what looked like a firearm at them. One of the persons reportedly engaged in a tussle with the man and was chopped on the leg during the struggle. The noise attracted community members who went to their rescue. The man was chopped on his lower body and hit on the head and fell to the ground. The police were called and he was later pronounced dead at hospital. The police reportedly retrieved an imitation firearm, two machetes, a knife, and an ice pick from the scene. The Clarendon police have reached a critical point of their investigation into the shooting death of a farmer in Longville Park in the parish late last year. Formal charges have been laid against three people, one of them a policeman. 32-year-old Constable Jimoke Ingram of Longville Park, Clarendon, and 33-year-old Sheldon Harris, a car wash operator also of Longville Park, were charged jointly with murder, possession of a prohibited weapon, unauthorized possession of ammunition, and use of a weapon to commit a felony. These charges stem from the shooting death of 59-year-old farmer Donnett Lowe, also of a Longville Park address. Reports from the Clarendon Police say that about 4.45 a.m. on December 27, two men, one armed with a gun, visited Lowe at his home, and engaged him in a brief conversation. Shortly after, explosions were heard and the police were alerted. On their arrival, Lowe was seen lying in a pool of blood with gunshot wounds to his upper body and was taken to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead. The swift action of lawmen led to the arrest of the duo, and they were subsequently pointed out during an identification parade. Investigators in pursuit of evidence relative to the murder of Lowe led them to Constable Ingram's home, where an operation was conducted. A search of the premises was done in the presence of Ingram and 32-year-old customer service representative Shaneka Simpson, who also resides at the address. The search resulted in the recovery of hundreds of rounds of ammunition and an illegal handgun. Ingram and Simpson were then slapped with the following charges in relation to the seizure. Possession of prohibited weapon, unauthorized possession of ammunition, 
dealing in prohibited weapon, stockpiling of prohibited weapon, and unauthorized use of premises for the storage of firearm. We.jm, NHT Online, and the mobile app. And Hold on. What a strong thing this will help me lift up the two boxes I'll be them the other. <laughs> yeah, man. Something like them strong. You know? You can't handle this, you know. It will hurt you. What them say? No pain. No pain. Hey, boy, you take your knife from me now. Where are you? <laughs> Walk and live. Dead. Born Paul Campbell on October 21, 1959, in Raytown, Kingston, Jamaica. Known mostly by the names of the characters that he played in the movies such as Priest, Capone, and Mad Max, is a Jamaican actor who is regarded as one of Jamaica's most decorated actors and is most famous for his leading roles in Dancehall Queen, The Lunatic, Third World Cop, and shot us. His family later moved from Ray Town to the volatile community of Mexfield Gardens, where he was exposed to graphic crime and violence. With a supportive mother and a strong will to maintain his momentum on his trajectory towards his goals, Paul persevered despite the adversities. Campbell attended Kingston College in Jamaica. After completing his education at Kingston College, he enrolled at the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts, where he got the opportunity to enhance his acting skills. But with transportation issues and the fear of gun violence in his Maxfield community, Paul would soon find himself sleeping in the bathroom of the school. But that did not deter the ambitious youngster who would proceed to become one of Jamaica's best actors. Paul got his first break in the Jamaican showbiz industry when he was offered an acting role in the drama Johnny Reggae at the National Pantomime. But his first big break came in 1991 when he got a role in the movie Lunatic. In an interview, Campbell disclosed that his acting job in the film The Lunatic, which was produced by Chris Blackwell, made him realize his dream. While working as an entertainment manager at the now-defunct Coney Park Entertainment Resort, in Kingston, Paul auditioned for the movie role and was chosen. The movie The Lunatic also helped by molding him to become a great actor. Paul, who describes himself as a method actor, did not have an easy way into the movie industry. In another interview, he said he took on the challenging task of walking barefooted on the treacherous 50 miles journey from Kingston to St. Anne where he would live in the wild for months, pretending to be of unsound mind, eating fruits and spoiled fish, thrown to him by the residents, while preparing himself for acting in the movie. The movie was a success and gave Paul the necessary exposure he needed to propel his illustrious career. But the success of his role in The Lunatic was overshadowed by the death of his mother, who passed just before the movie was released. In 1997, he played the role of a menacing street thug who goes by the name Priest in the movie dance hall Queen, which cemented his name in the Jamaican showbiz world. Dance hall Queen was a mega success and gave Paul more popularity and fame. In 1999, he starred in another classic Jamaican movie, Third World Cop. This time, he played the role of a police enforcer and crime fighter, who goes by the name Capone, the movie was another huge success that would allow Paul to display his versatility as a great actor. In 2002, he played the role as a cold-blooded killer called Mad Max in the Jamaican movie Shadas. The film was immensely successful and was even popular in some international markets. The cast, which includes stars like Spraga Benz, Kimani Marley, Wyclef John, Agent Sasko and Louis Rankin is Paul's biggest film so far and made him the most famous actor in Jamaica. He later played a role in another popular Jamaican movie, Jamaican Mafia, and also has numerous other movie roles, TV shows, and stage productions to his credit. 